not racist. And now it's going to segue if the globalists have their way into, until a, a, a true divided country. The system doesn't want people at barbecues and football games getting along. They want, under the name of multiculturalism, to have everyone looking over their shoulder and thinking people don't like them. Thinking people are out to get them. And just like after the burning cities of the late 60s, they passed the 68 Gun Control Act, federalized stuff. That's what they're testing right now. They're thinking. I mean, it's 100%. Hyping violence, hyping race war, uh, NBC editing tapes to make Zimmerman sound racist, caught, uh, all of it, just like the lacrosse team. They are so desperate to find some anti-white information in the control corporate media that they said that the whole lacrosse team, oh, white men raping a black woman, this is pure gold. So whenever there's black on white crime, the media will not report it. But whenever they can find somewhere, I mean, Zimmerman looks Hispanic, but they call him white. And then people go, but he looks like Hispanic. Okay, he's a white Hispanic. Because they want to make it white people. You see? Because that's the narrative. They want to get a white versus black clash going here. I mean, Obama, top estimates are about 9% African. Because his dad is part Arab, part white, and part African. If you believe that guy that looks nothing like him is his dad. I mean, Obama looks like he might be 10% might be African somewhere back there. The word is from Wayne Madsen's investigation and stuff is, is that really uh, he's Caribbean. So he's got native background, Spanish background, black, you know, the whole nine yards. And that's exactly what Obama looks like. You know, handsome, good looking, Mediterranean, uh, you know, black, Hispanic, white mix. And... The point is, are we going to call him a white black person? Zimmerman is a white Hispanic. Now, of course, the first month it was a white guy. It's like a white guy did something. Get him, beat him up. And I'm tired of it. I mean, the white people I know are so politically correct that if they're in a business situation... I've had these discussions where, well, they were asking me, you know, what lady I talked to, but 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 the lady I talked to was black. Am I supposed to say it was the black lady? And the politically correct go, no, you weren't supposed to. But if it was a red-haired lady, you'd say a red-haired white lady or, or a brunette with glasses. I was a black guy with a red baseball cap. Ah, you don't even say. I saw comments on a, on a huge report we did for the Nightly News that then got posted to YouTube with Sheriff Arpaio and uh, Zulo, as top investigator, and others on the fake birth certificate. Arpaio gets up and says at the press conference, there's been a blackout on this information. And half the discussion was, see, he's racist. Blackout is code for black people. No, a blackout has always meant a blackout, like turn the lights out when a bombers come to bomb your city so nobody sees where they can bomb, or blacking things out, like the FBI blacked out the text of the document. That's what a blackout means, blacking it out, blackballed. Blacklisted. You know, uh, if, if they said you were communist in, in Hollywood, nothing to do with black people. And, and and then there's all the well, don't call them black people. Call them call them African Americans. And then black folks are like, no, call us black. It's like Russell Means, you know, they have American leader. I'm like Native American. He goes, please just call me an Indian. I don't like the political correctness. Again, it's this patronizing liberal destruction of language where they control the language and where and where Arpaio can't even say our 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 findings that this birth certificate's fake has been blacked out and he's a racist. I mean, again, that's to segue 
into you don't believe global warming is happening or that it's man-made. They're saying all over the news, arrest people. In fact, they're moving to do it in Europe. I, I saw a BBC article where they have undercover police in restaurants where if they hear you call someone homosexual, if you use the scientific term, or say black, you are arrested. I'm not kidding. You can pull that up. Robin Page, BBC reporter, said we deserve the same rights in rural areas as Muslims and homosexuals. And they said the word homosexual was hateful and arrested him. I had him on. And the news was like, good, he's been arrested. He said the word. And that's so some weirdo like this professor and all these other professors, climate change skepticism, a sickness that must be treated, says professor, global warming alarmist equates climate denial with racism. You see, nothing to do with race. When I criticize Obama for the NDAA, they say, you're not, the media comes and says, you're not really a racist, are you? No, I don't want to be secretly arrested. The system didn't put Obama in there to bring racial unity. The system wants divide and conquer. That's my point. I want everybody, no matter what race, color, creed they are, to have a good life and a good future and to, to live in harmony and peace. And as we go into this depression, as the system moves us towards civil unrest that they know is going to happen from this depression. They want to shift it into racial conflict so the government can be the referee. Listen to me carefully, because this is the heart of all of it. They don't want the civil unrest to be about the government or police brutality or corruption. Whether it's good or bad, and I say it's bad when a cop shoots a you know, black guy in handcuffs in the back and doesn't get in trouble. They don't hype that up. But when they got a case of a, quote, white guy where they can pull everybody against each other, then the media hypes it. It's about getting us all fighting so the system can play referee and then bring in even more political correctness where they sit up there like the gods and say, you're a racist. You know, when I had uh, History Channel here, Multiple times, Discovery Channel, Nightline, MSNBC, it's always the same. I'll be talking about 9-11 being an inside job or government drug dealing, and they'll look at me and they'll say, you're not racist, are you? And I'm like, now I'm supposed to say, no, I don't beat my wife. Or no, I don't, you know, kidnap people. It's like saying, you're not a drug dealer, are you? And then they say, well, talking about big banks, you're not anti-Semitic, are you? And, and I explained to the last group that was here, I said, you injecting that is what's backfired now on the system. And now everybody is becoming anti-Semitic, a lot of people are, because you, you, you have any opinion on anything, the system uses that because it's a thing to hammer people down. It's something that's, oh, no, I'm not that. And now it's used against everybody. They say that it's anti-Semitic to not believe man-made global warming. They actually say it. It has nothing to do with reality. It's political correctness as a weapon. Obama administration exploits Trayvon shooting to push anti-gun race-baiting rhetoric. Establishment is creating the myth of white on black violence to take everyone's rights. The Obama administration is supporting and its supporters and the establishment media are engaging in a transparent effort to whip up racial tension over the Trayvon Martin shooting in a bid to chill Second Amendment rights and polarize the American people as part of an election stunt. In doing so, they're manufacturing a race baiting myth that threatens to cause genuine racial unrest. It's already happening. The evil whites are getting what they deserve, so I'm told. The notion that white-on-black hate crimes are a problem of epidemic proportion, when in reality, federal crime statistics prove the opposite is true. Despite a witness telling Sanford police that he saw Martin attacking George Zimmerman, a black witness, before the fatal shot was fired, clearly suggesting Zimmerman was acting in self-defense, the administration has exploited the tragedy to create momentum for the right to self-defense to be abolished altogether. During a CBS 
News interview, which aired yesterday, Vice President Biden said the incident would reopen debate on the Stand Your Ground self-defense law, which also flagrantly lied about the Second Amendment. He went on to lie about it. And he went on. I'm going to come back and tell you about this, then go to your phone calls. But the point is, this is the re-election bid of Obama. This is it. And, and, and Media Matters and George Soros is divide and conquer, get us all fighting with each other, and then government will play the part of referee by coming in and taking everybody's liberties and freedoms and restricting the Second Amendment. Remember what the Attorney General said? He said, we've got to have the media brainwash the public against individuals owning firearms. And he has said in public letters he believes in the abolition of the individual right to keep and bear arms, which is the declaration of war against our country and our republic. For far too long, the system has used political correctness to make us all bow down and worship the public criminals that run our lives. I mean, all the Corzine memos are public that he gave the order to steal the money. Nothing's happened to him six months in. Or five and a half months in, if you want to get technical. Uh, here's the Chicago Tribune. We were reporting on this last week. I've got to say, we're now driving the news. When government comes out with bioethicist groups and says kill babies up to age three, we force the mainstream media to cover it. We report first. We reported first last week that the government threw out the GMO labels. They got over a million confirmed signatures the government threw out 70% of them and just said they only received 300 and something thousand to demand GMO labeling on all food. Again, the system is trying to block you at every single front from you being able to make your own decision. The government just blocked BPA ban. Most other countries, since we've been exposing it in the last decade, and others, have taken the BPA out. Causes cancer, sterility, it's deadly. Just, just from our own sewage that gets into lakes and streams, it's killing the fish and making them sterile. Frogs, you name it. But the FDA, Food and Drug Administration, doesn't want you to be able to not be exposed to it. There's your criminal government. You know, instead of blacks, whites, Hispanics, Asians, all looking over each shoulders, you know, at each other and all paranoid because the media teaches us that we all hate each other. And, but the media is there to be the referee, though, and make sure we're all good boys and girls. How about we say, hey, we want labeling of what has cross-species GMO in it. We want to know if plants grow their own pesticide so bugs won't eat it and then you feed it to us. That's the main thing causing all this liver failure on record in all the rodent studies. We want the BPA out that's actually hurting all of us. But see, it doesn't hurt you in a humiliating way like a couple white guys beating some poor gay person to death, which they make a cause celeb. Or some poor black guy getting shot, whatever the case is, that makes a cause celeb. No, it's just cancer rates, thousands of percentile off the chart. A, a, a general death, a general curse. You see, we have to set the agenda, and more and more we are. That's why there's all this internet censorship coming. We got big news on that front coming up in a moment. Extremely unconstitutional out of Arizona. I'm going to get into the whole NFL situation. But... Violence Policy Center, Handgun Control Incorporated, they've all said they plan to try to completely ban semi-autos in the next administration. The NRA has put out a uh, warning saying that they, quote, do plan to ban types of firearms in the next administration. Eric Holder has been caught shipping guns into Mexico to blame the Second Amendment and perjuring himself. So we'd be crazy not to know this is coming. And now Biden's saying, oh yeah, we're going to bring up gun control now over Trayvon Martin. So now it'll be some racial right. Now owning guns is going to be racist. Just like if you don't think man-made global warming's real, you're racist. You're like, but that doesn't make any sense. It isn't supposed to. All right, we're into hour number two. 
We got a BBC headline here that I want to go over. Boeing tries to defy gravity. 